Today we will look at the problem of CGNAT and logging, which is an important topic in a service provider environment. CGNAT, as you know, stands for Carrier Grade NAT and is an industry standard solution to deal with the problem of IPv4 address depletion. So the way it works is that you have your cell phone towers, your clients coming in, they go through a service provider cloud, then they go through a CGNAT box, and then they go out to the internet. So these clients, which are your mobile subscribers, may be assigned an IP address like say 10.1.1.x. And your public IP addresses are very limited in number. So how do you solve this problem? Well, you map them from like say 10.1.1.x.x to a public IP, which could be like say 209.164.x.x and send them out towards the internet. And this could be your evolved packet code. So CGNAT helps you to deal with this problem of IPv4 address deletion and mapping a large number of subscribers to a limited public IPv4 address space. Now, what is the problem of logging? Suppose you have these servers on the internet and suppose something bad happens to one of these servers or some of the servers, like say a DDoS attack. The federal agencies or the law enforcement agencies may trace back this kind of a network activity to this public IP and ask the service providers, tell me who is the corresponding user. So how do the telcos or the service providers deal with this problem today? Well, as a part of the federal requirement, they are supposed to log this information about private to public IP mapping. So what they do is they keep it in a log database they put the timestamp, the private IP, like say 10.1.x.x, and the corresponding public IP to which it was mapped, like say 209.164.x.x. So this kind of a database is typically maintained by one department in a telco environment. However, as you can see, this information is not sufficient. Why is that so? Well, this public IP or the private IP could be assigned to say me uh, to me today, but it, tomorrow it could be assigned to some other user. So you could have these private IPs assigned to different users at different points of time. So what you need to do is you need to map this to an MS ISDN value. These private IP addresses actually get assigned to a device like a mobile phone or a PC or a whatever mobile device that is accessing the internet. So what you need to do is you need to then map this private IP to the corresponding MS ISDN value. This kind of information is maintained by another group in a telco environment. Now again, this is still not enough because what you really want to do is find out the end user ID. So this is now maintained in a third database. So now you have to go to a third group which maintains this information and actually map this to a username. Now this process can be a very time consuming process. On day one, you go and map your public to private IP. On day two, you go to another group and map from private IP to MSISDN. And finally, on day three, you map it from MSISDN to the actual username. So it's going to take you around three to four days before you are able to actually resolve the request and give the information back to the federal agencies or the law enforcement agencies. So how can A10 help you to solve this problem? Well, we can interact and get a feed from a AAA server or the equivalent of a AAA server in a telco environment. Now, where does this AAA server come into the picture? Whenever your mobile subscriber gets onto the network or is roaming from one network to the other, the AAA server will kick in, will authenticate the user and send this information to the CGNAT box. Now, when the user roams the internet, and we create this mapping from private to public IP, we can create a unified log message which contains all this information. So we will have one unified log containing the timestamp, the private IP to public IP. Then we will also map the MSISDN value and it will also contain the username. So the advantage of this approach is that you get all this information in a single log message. So first of all, this helps you to resolve the query in a much faster time. So instead of spending three to four days in resolving the query, you will be able to resolve the same query within a few minutes by just doing a very quick query lookup. Second advantage is that it helps you to reduce the size of the database. So instead of maintaining three different databases, you can get a consolidated log information in a single database. And finally, it also reduces your query time and other efficient processes because you now just do a very quick query lookup instead of doing these three or four times.
So this solution from A10 has been shipping for a number of years. A lot of telco and service providers are using our solution to solve this logging problem. And I hope that with this knowledge, you will be also able to leverage our solution to solve a similar problem in your network. Thanks for watching.